All right, everyone, now we have to talk about nationwide nimbyism as it is applied to climate change. You had the climate conference, it's COP26 or something, uh, a few days ago, culminating with basically hastily drawn up, loosely agreed upon, totally malleable and toothless emissions goals, and talks about how much green energy they'll have and electric cars and all this horse shit that, that makes corporations a lot of money and ultimately does absolutely nothing to curb actual emissions, pollution, etc. It's nimbyism. Um, much like individuals who are nimbyous will say, well, I believe in a greener world. That's why I have my monocultured, you know, chemically fertilized lawn, by the way. But don't put the nuclear plant in my backyard. I don't want windmills within sight of, of my little hillside home. I don't want the solar field near me. I don't want to have to pay more to have solar mounted on my home's roof. I don't approve of that, but my neighbor should definitely have to involve themselves with these things. That's local NIMBYism. That's individuals and communities, neighborhoods, etc. Um, the neighborhood doesn't want the treatment facility, but they're very worried about addiction. Likewise, nations do the same thing. China and India have now predictably balked on the emissions totals goals that they have themselves took part in agreeing upon. Why? Because they understand that climate change is essentially a corporate grift and it would lose them money. Now, in the West, when you look at the, the investors in like the U.S. and stuff, they don't care if U.S. industry is offshored because they can always invest in it once it's in China or India. And in fact, it's great for them. The return on investment will be higher because they don't have to worry about building codes, worker safety, workers' rights, certainly, especially in China, is a fucking joke. They don't have to worry about the environment. As long as the smokestacks are over there, even if they're owned by Western industrialists, the Western industrialists can still sell things to all the nimbiest trust funder Apple using crapple kids in the Western world by saying, look, we built X number of solar panels this year. We, put, we, we have a green campus, says Apple. Look, we've got a bunch of solar panels and a windmill and shit like that. It's feel-good, hippy-trippy nonsense that just takes that same pollution, which will be made anyway due to the law of supply and demand puts it in a country with less environmental regulations. China and India love it. They have become manufacturing superpowers. For them to make the argument with a straight face, well, we're still developing, so we should be treated differently, it's hilarious. They're already the world's biggest polluter, uh, polluters. If you wanted to tackle this issue, so-called, that people sometimes believe in, called an uh, anthropogenic climate change, you would need to look to India and China you would need to browbeat them into complying with the same kind of environmental laws the West has. That's at a bare minimum. That's just to buy the world a couple more years. Now, we've been told we've already been past uh, uh, multiple stages where dire predictions were made based on atmospheric CO2 levels, ocean temperature levels, etc. We've already gone past all of those markers that we were prior told were the end-all, be-all of the tipping point, the point of no return. Supposedly five or six times already we've already hit it. That's why when I look at behavior like this, the nimbyism, <clears throat> the corporation-centric uh, uh, model, which is used in all these countries, and really it's part of globalism. Don't think about it really as nations so much as just investors, and, and they're globalists. They don't really have a, a nation that they pledge loyalty or have patriotism to. They want to keep making their money. This is why you see elites in 17-room mansions that are two feet above sea level. This is why you see them with five cars. This is why you see them own private jets. If they were serious about this as a problem, if they believed in it and they thought that humans could do something about it, if, if this was really the problem that they claim at these conferences, they'd be number one telling the NIMBYs to shut the hell up. They'd say, no, 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 we are putting the nuclear plant in your neighborhood because we don't have a choice because otherwise you'll be living next to sand dunes because the world will turn into Tatooine. Yes, we are going to force you to have home solar. Yes, we are going to do X, Y, and Z, and you're going to have to take part. We want you to plant trees. Paying us money is not enough. But that's the whole thing. It's about money and power. It allows them more regulatory power. When you look at the West, Western investors, they don't care if everything's regulated in the West. They don't care if the factory dries up in middle America. As long as the factory, because the law of supply and demand, ends up existing somewhere else, they can potentially build it because they have the capital. They can take out a zero interest loan from the U.S. government and then turn around through money laundering and build a factory in India. And they don't have to fire, uh, follow worker protection laws. They don't have to care about these things. They actually make more money. Some of that comes back to the United States and then the government takes its cut 
and then you give a little bit of welfare breadcrumbs to all the people you put out of work. It works for them. It's basically globalistic slavery when you really think about it. I'm not surprised they're balking on the proposals, though, but here's the thing. It's a floor show. They wouldn't have followed the guidelines anyway. They'll just cook the books, especially China. China has cooked its COVID numbers. It cooks its currency totals. It cooks its GDP totals. It fiddles around with weasel words within math. It, basically, the idea of 2 plus 2 equals 5 is, is very much real in China with regards to state functions. They will just say, no, 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 we're going to drop a decimal uh, point off of this factory's emission totals. We'll fiddle with the machinery that's used, you know, because China makes all the components. We'll, we'll fortify the uh, numbers that this smokestack is putting out as far as the emissions. They can follow any emissions goals that they want. Not in reality, but on paper. The climate change thing, for most intents and purposes, at this point has become nothing more than a corporate shill grift. That's what it has become. The fact is that it's not going to destroy the world and turn it into Tatooine. We've been sold that particular line over and over. It's just the same as if we don't do, uh, if we don't have body scanners and have you take off your shoes and, and check everything and, and so forth at the airport, we'll have another 9-11. If we don't all wear hazmat suits all the time, force people to be vaccinated, avoid all social contact and do whatever your local authorities say on a day-to-day -day basis, everyone will die of COVID. The same is true of climate change. And the unifying feature of all these things is that some corporations make a lot of money and some members of government get to pass a lot of rules that often have very little to do with the problem that they're suggesting exists. Many of the proposals here in the West would not be able to be followed by smaller businesses, regional chains and stuff. They don't have the capital necessary to do so. Walmart doesn't care. Walmart has the expendable money, and they can always use the loopholes anyway. So it doesn't really make a difference. They'll, they'll pay off a carbon tax pittance, uh, and then they'll, their smokestacks will still be billowing out pollution. Or if they can't do that, they'll just put them in China. And China will continuously politically balk on these malleable rules that they can withdraw from at any time without any repercussions, and they can hold their energy dominance or their, you know, their, their uh, export dominance over the rest of the world. I would like to explain, <clears throat> when you talk about green energy projects in the West, the rare earth minerals are coming from North Korea or China, slavery is involved, they're shipped across the entire world, then, then put together maybe in a U.S. plant, unless they're prefabricated in some way. The Chinese will then come in BLM style, Bureau of Land Management, not Black Lives Matter, like at the Bundy Ranch, and force people out of, out of uh, supposedly conserved land to build a solar field, and then other people will be driven away under some environmental auspice. It's one hand washing the other over and over and over, but the hands never really get clean because they're fucking goddamn filthy. That's about all. Peace out.